Yo, what's up guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Mr. Lawrence and in today's video I will share 10 plus PvP tips and tricks. Hopefully this video helps you to become a better player in combat and there will be timestamps in the description below for each tip and trick. Let me know by dropping a like if you want me to share some more PvP tips and tricks. More advanced ones maybe and if you want you can subscribe. But before we begin, check out Aurora Resupply, they provide multiple GTA services such as modded accounts, money and rank boost for all platforms. They are really fast and reliable, the link will be in the description below and let's get straight into the video. First I want to go over the settings, most players don't even change it and it makes a big difference. Load into story mode or creator, then open your pass menu and go to settings. Here we can change the targeting mode, it will be on assisted aim partial, change it to assisted aim full, I will show you why later on. I have these three settings turned off and now we will move on to the sensitivity. I have everything on max sensitivity but if you had a lower sensitivity before only adjust it by a couple bars because you will need to get used to it. Also make sure that allow movement when zoomed in is turned on. Then you will be able to snipe and move at the same time. Then go to the camera and change your vehicle camera to a high. This will improve your driving skills too. Now make sure that this bar is all the way full to get the best first person FOV. Now turn off first person ragdoll, combat roll and head bobbing. Turn on first person third person cover. Now we will go to display which have some underrated settings. My weapon target is simple and you can also change it to complex weapon target. I will show you what that looks like in just a second. You can also change the size of your weapon target if it's on simple. I will first show you all the difference between a low and high sensitivity. You can see that my screen turns very slow on low sensitivity. If there's someone behind me I won't be able to turn around in time to defend myself. But on high sensitivity I can quickly go and look to any direction. And this is why we changed our targeting mode to auto aim full. If you aim and flick your right joystick to the left or right it will lock on to different targets and that's only possible with this targeting mode. This is what the complex weapon targets look like. I think it's less accurate. This is the simple target. It's a dot and you can change the size in your settings. One bar is the best size in my opinion. The biggest size is just weird and you can barely even see the small one. If you now do a combat roll while in first person it will go into third person which allows you to scan the area. If you ragdoll it will also switch to third person. Now I will show you the difference between a low and high vehicle camera. I think the high camera is way better, it gives you a better view and you can change the distance by pressing your touchpad. Another underrated tip is highlighting players. If you are after someone in a full lobby, you can highlight the player. You can do this through your interaction menu by going to the highlight player option, then go to the player and turn it on. For some reason it sometimes disappears, so I recommend that you do it through your phone, by going to your contacts and find the name of the player and highlight him. I can now see that he is in the LS car meet and I probably wouldn't know that if I didn't highlight him. Another tip is to use your minimap. A lot of players just forget about it and you can expand it by pressing down on your d-pad 3 times. You can also change your minimap to an expanded radar in your settings and then to display. I don't really like the expanded radar because it takes away a big part of my screen. The next tip is to wear protective clothing, especially bulletproof and combat helmets. These helmets can protect you from two more bullets. If you are not wearing one, you will die with one shot. You can find these helmets at the clothing or mask store. So you can buy one of these standard bulletproof helmets or go to combat helmets and buy one of the quadlands helmets. These give you protection and thermal vision at the same time. To turn on the thermal vision, first put your visor down, so hold right on the d-pad. If that doesn't work, open your interaction menu, go to style, then to visor and select visor down. Then go to accessories, hover over helmets and press square or X to activate it. You can now see everyone a lot better and even further away than usual if you use a sniper.
The next tip is to use armor as snacks. You can buy armor at any ammunition or your agency if it has a weapon workshop. If you are a high enough level, you can buy this one and it will give you full armor, showcased with the blue bar on your minimap. You can also equip multiple lighter armor to get full armor. Snacks can be bought at any grocery store, but if you want it for free, you can get it at Simeon's dealership and your office. I believe that the Ego Chaser is the best snack. Ego Chaser heals you the fastest. Just a quick tip, if you eat snacks through your interaction menu, you will go through the whole animation. But if you take cover anywhere, you can eat snacks without the animation. Even better, they added a quick option to use snacks and body armor if you open your weapon wheel. You can see the options over here. Now I will go over the best weapons. First of all, the homing launcher is better than the RPG. You will have it unlocked when you are level 1 already instead of level 100. It shoots faster and the range is better. Also buy the minigun. If you are not level 120, you can buy the Widowmaker and I believe it's also better. The next one is the Marksman Rifle. This is a fast shooting sniper rifle. I use it to finish off my enemy when I already shot him with the heavy sniper. You also need a grenade launcher. The range and dip on the grenade is pretty good and you can bounce it off walls. The best weapon in the game is the special carbine. I will also show you how to make it even better. The last one are sticky bombs. They are just way better than grenades because you can detonate them. For this part, you will need a weapon workshop. You can have it in your MOC, Terrorbite, Avenger or even in your agency. Then go to Special Carbine and upgrade it to the MK2 version. If you have played bunker missions a lot, you will also have different ammo types unlocked, like Tracer, Incendiary, Armor Piecing and Full Metal Jacket Rounds. Also add the Holographic Scope, Muzzle, Grip and Heavy Barrel. The heavy sniper is a must have weapon, you can upgrade it to the MK2 version, but I recommend that you only do that if you have unlocked explosive rounds ammo type. You can also get a thermal scope, but it has the same effect as the quad lens helmet. One of my personal favorite weapons is the Comet MG. The damage that this thing does is insane. Also another quick helpful tip, sniping in first person is faster than in third person. If you are in third person, grab your sniper and move, it's pretty slow. But if you go into first person, you can move from side to side very fast. Moving on to the next tip, combat rolls. If you aim and press your jump button, it will do a combat roll. If your shooting stat is maxed out, you can do it faster back to back. But if it's low, you can only do a combat roll every 5 seconds or so. Check out my max stats video if you want to max out the shooting stat. So here you can see I did a combat roll and the other guy didn't hit me. He did a combat roll too, as you can see I don't have aiming on his character. Also always try to go for headshots, cause this guy isn't wearing any helmet, so it's one shot. A quick way to master it is by playing dead matches and especially the run and gun dead matches. Another really good tip is to never roll first. You can see that I let him roll first, then I will roll a second after and I got him with an easy headshot. Here again and you can kinda see that I rolled backwards. The next tip I have is to use your surroundings as cover. Here's an example, I use this tree as my cover and I can shoot him but he can't shoot me. Moving on to the best combat vehicles, for this video I just picked my top 2. The best combat vehicle to use is by far the Nightshot. Shark. It's fast, powerful, strong, it has good traction and acceleration. I recommend that you don't upgrade the windows to armor plating because then you won't be able to shoot from your car with normal weapons and even sticky bombs. So if you have the armor plating you will be more bulletproof but you can't shoot out the car, only with the minigun on the front of the car. And this beast can take up to 25 rockets, so an oppressor mark 2 doesn't even have enough rockets to destroy it. The second best car is the Torador. This vehicle is also really fast, that's because it has a boost. It also has very accurate missiles unlike the nerfed Oppressor Mark II. It's also really strong and it can take up to 4 homing missiles before it will explode. And on top of that you can even go underwater with this car. These last tips are used by Triers and Griefers, I don't really use them, but the first one is using BST aka Bushark Testosterone. You can buy it through your CEO menu or by calling Brucey, it will last for 1 minute. This will boost your damage done by bullets, explosives and even melee. This is pretty useful to destroy jets with a sniper. As you can see this helicopter is already smoking after a couple shots with a normal sniper and BST. The second one is activating ghost organization and going off the radar. Players won't be able to see you on the map for 3 minutes and with off the radar for another minute. 
the last one is by far the most annoying one and that's when you are low HP, just blow yourself up. I think that it should count as a kill for the other player. I have some more tips and tricks, but that's all for today's video and I will catch you in the next one. Bye bye.